Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Banking group Standard Bank says there are very few regions in the world that has lively per capita consumption of commodities, which presents Africa with a window of opportunity. Natasha Urdendahl has more. Despite being two-thirds of the G7 group of economies gross domestic product in 2009, the E7 grouping, the world's largest emerging market, would boast twice the size of output in terms of GDP by 2050. However, while this is an important, albeit ongoing, trend, it was the microeconomics underpinning this that was worthy of a closer look. Africa as the continent stands out as the one region in the world where the per capita consumption of commodities and the low and high end durable goods was expected to have robust growth rates, while the rich world had passed its peak. Standard Bank's chief economist Gulam Balim discusses how there may be just only one decade left of still accelerating commodities consumption. Over the next coming years and decades, we're very curious to understand the nature of consumer spending. In reality, there's very few regions in the world where you're still going to have incredibly lively per capita consumption of commodities, low and durable goods, high and durable goods, and services. Put it more candidly, in the rich world, they have passed the peak in terms of the growth rates in their consumption of certainly commodities, low and durable goods, maybe even high and durable goods. And they will be spending more, the only areas of real growth are in high-end services and, and probably some sections of high-end durable goods. Africa stands out as the one region in the world where the per capita consumption of the items that I've just mentioned is subpar and growth rates are likely to be incredibly robust for a period of time. With respect to just say China within the BRICS constellation, there may just be one decade left of still accelerating per capita commodities consumption, a window of opportunity for the continent, before there is then a <coughs> slowdown in per capita consumption of commodities. And in the next decade, maybe even low-end durable goods. Other news making headlines this week. Innovative building technologies can aid delivery of social infrastructure and bricks to face internal economic headwinds in 2014. Social infrastructure, including clinics, schools and students' accommodation, will be constructed using innovative building technologies, which can reduce costs by up to 41% and construction time by up to 50%. It's really to push the technology levels in, in construction for a simple reason is to improve building performance because we know we can get better e um, economics, we know we can deliver infrastructure sooner, quicker, we can get better quality, but the performance unit of the performance of the unit itself in terms of thermal comfort levels for the students is going to be better. And the heating and cooling loads are going to be better, the environmental performance is going to be better. So there's a whole bunch of related issues where we can see it's not just the industry that can improve, can benefit, but the actual end user. The seemingly tough year experienced by the Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa or BRICS economic grouping during 2013 was expected to continue this year as the bloc increasingly faces internal challenges. When we look at a slowing China, we need to not take an alarmist view in the African context. This is not going to bottom out China's relations with Africa. It's not going to hollow out the, the tremendous growth and momentum that has been attached to this relationship. We have always said that Africa now, with the BRICS, with other emerging markets, has a multiple, has, has a multi, faces a multipolar economic universe. So unlike in the past, when if the advanced world, particularly Europe, was in crisis, Africa had no option. That was our principal and, and, and often primary trade and investment partner. Now we've got these other poles of influence, which is, gives us diversity, it gives us resilience, and, and that certainly is a positive thing. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.